Mutton Town Woods, written by the Grim Sleeper. This happened about four years ago, almost to the day. It was super chilly out and fall was in full swing by that point. I was at a friend's house, we will call him Chris, recording with my bandmates and friends, we will call them Rob and Bill, and pretty much just enjoying the evening. But boredom struck and since Chris lived in the middle of nowhere, there wasn't much to do during the day, let alone nighttime. It was about 10.30 when Chris struck up a conversation about how stoked he was that Halloween was coming up, haunted hayrides, Halloween parties, etc. We all chimed in and agreed that this time of year had a certain allure to it. The county that Chris lived in just so happened to be where I grew up and lived in for most of my life as well. It's a very historic county filled with old houses and towns, rich with history and lore. Then. Rob spoke up with a certain excitement in his eyes. Are there any haunted places around here? Like real haunted houses or someplace we can go to see ghosts and shit? Mind you, Rob is one of the biggest chicken shits when it comes to the paranormal, so I was pretty skeptic that we would even get out there without him whining and wanting to go back before we got to said place. Bill was a trickster and always liked to cause bullshit everywhere that we went and he was just an all-around prankster, so that was another reason I was very reluctant about this little scheme. He chimed in and said in a low voice, Yeah, Chris, we should all go hunt down some demons and watch Rob piss his pants. So you better bring some extra pampers in your car, just in case. Rob wasn't amused at this and shot him a glance from across the room. But... Of course, I had to agree with him. It was pretty exciting to go out in the middle of the night looking for trouble and excitement, and plus, I'm super into the paranormal and whatnot, so I just had to go along with the peer pressure and nod my head as they went on about what spot we should go to. Then Chris started up in his typical overdramatic animated storytelling voice. Well, dudes, there is this place about 10 or 15 minutes from here. The locals call it Mutton Town Woods. It's a crossroads surrounded by dense woods. They say they used to hang criminals back there by the hundreds. Shit, I've only been there a handful of times and it's really sketchy. People also say teenagers and whatnot used to do satanic rituals and animal sacrifices back there too. Pretty fucked up if you ask me. I could see Rob now eating his words, forever opening his mouth about going ghost hunting. He looked up at me, wide-eyed and full of foreboding anxiety of sorts. Yeah, I don't know. You sure we should be going back there? What if the cops show up? I just, I really don't feel like hearing it from my mom. You are 19 years old, Bill pointed out. What is your mom going to make you sit in time out if we do happen to run into trouble? Grow a pair, live a little, you pansy ass. Chris laughed a little and Rob muttered a few insults and curses under his breath. This was going to be a fun, exciting, possibly dangerous adventure into the unknown woods of New Jersey. What could possibly go wrong? We got our hoodies on, packed a few essentials, flashlights, snacks, you know, the works, and made our way upstairs into the door. You sure will be fine, Rob said. Relax, I told him in a stern tone and half pushed him out the door. We got to Chris's rickety-ass 2001 Pontiac Sunfire and all hopped in. Chris rolled the windows down as Bill slid into the passenger seat and Rob and myself piled our shit into the back seats and tried to fit in amongst the backpacks and miscellaneous items that we were bringing. It was pitch black out and around 11.30 by the time we backed out of the little gravel driveway and made our way along down the winding lane that headed towards the main road from Chris's house. God damn it's dark out, Chris exclaimed as he flipped on his high beams. The car putted and whined down the road as we all looked out the windows at the dimly lit houses that were scattered few and far in between the countryside, among the grain fields and pastures. The cool night air smelled of wood burning stoves and bonfires since it was in fact Saturday night. Rob yelled up to Chris as we came to the fork in the road. We almost there yet, asshole? Yeah. Chris chuckled. It's right up here. Sure enough, as the headlights illuminated the road in front of us, I could see massive pine and oak trees towering along the roadside a hundred or so yards up the road. It looked very ominous. 
the way the headlights barely lit the stumps and foliage and how the moonlight barely crept through the branches and limbs. We were soon engulfed in the darkness of the trees and rampant undergrowth along each side of the two-laned road. We rolled the windows up as the car slowly rolled to a stop in the middle of the road. It was really chilly out. A mist rose from the ditches on each side of the road, adding to the already intensifying excitement I could feel welling up in my chest. Where the hell are we going to park? Bill asked Chris. We should be okay just parking on the shoulder of the road. There aren't any cars coming anyway. He was right. I maybe saw two cars the entire ride there, if that. So, what are we supposed to do? I spoke up. We just kind of wait here for something to happen, I guess? I still don't think this is a good idea, Rob said under his breath towards me. Just relax, enjoy the weather and the scenery, Bill chuckled as he turned to Rob in the back seat with a devious grin on his face. So, we all decided to sit and wait. We were sitting there, chain smoking and debating on whether or not we were going to see anything when Rob let out this half scream, half choking sound. It was like he couldn't form words. Oh, spit it out, you doofus, Bill said in an annoyed voice. The, 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 there's someone out there. We all kind of looked at him puzzlingly. What do you mean, someone is out there? I asked him, my voice almost half shaking due to what he had just said. I, I swear to God, dude, there's someone out on the road or something. I don't fucking know. How the hell can there be someone out there? Chris asked Rob. We have literally seen no cars and the nearest house to here is abandoned and like half a mile up the road. I think we were all starting to get a little frantic at this point. Now, Bill and Chris swear there was nothing out there, but I, I don't know. I remember looking out the back window and seeing this figure kind of pacing back and forth about 50 feet back. Maybe it was just my eyes adjusting to the darkness. Maybe it was my sick, twisted, wishful thinking. But goddamn, it scared the hell out of me, whatever who or what was there. I didn't say anything to the guys. I didn't want to cause any more alarm than had been caused by Rob's outburst. Bill kept being an asshole and bumping the inside panel of his door, yelping and yipping to get Rob to jump. Knock it off, you dick, Rob said. We should probably get going. We still have some shit to finish up at the studio, right? Uh, mm, yeah, I said, my lips still quivering from being a little shaken up. I couldn't stop glancing out the back window. Just then, I turned to Rob. He had this kind of dumbfounded look on his face, like he had just saw something that completely turned his blood cold. What is it, buddy? I said to him as I gave him a little nudge. The other two were in front, playing on their phones and not being aware of what Rob was staring at either. D do you see that? He muttered. See what, Rob? This better not be you pulling some bullshit to try and scare me some more. No, it's, it's not. There's something in that tree up there, across the road, about 20 feet up on that branch. He pointed, his mouth still agape, and just stared. I looked up, following the little invisible line along where he was pointing looking from the base of the very large, very old oak tree and slowly followed its trunk upwards. He wasn't bullshitting. On the seemingly large branch that he was referring and pointing to was this black mass. It was almost humanoid, but not. It was big. It looked bigger than a linebacker in comparison, to be honest, and was pitch black. Even the faint glow of the moon couldn't penetrate through whoever or whatever it was. It kind of just sat there, perched and partially hidden by the small branches and leaves. I couldn't believe it. What the hell was it? Why was it just sitting there? It almost looked like it was watching us intently. Just then, it hopped about 20 feet out of the tree and landed silently. Why are you guys so quiet back there? What are you, cuddling in the back seat to keep warm? Chris said as he locked his phone screen. Rob, are you alright? They both were facing us now. Rob looked at them both with a blank, horrified face and kept pointing. They averted their gaze only long enough to see whatever the fuck it was turn and back itself behind the tree out of sight. 
Yo, what the hell is that? Is that like a person fucking with us? I still haven't seen any cars pass. Who would be out here this late besides us? Bill looked at me, eyes wide, and I could feel his uneasiness too. Then, it looked like it was peering around the side of the tree, as if this was a fucked up version of hide and seek. Yo, let's get the fuck out of here, Chris said as he turned the car on and flipped on his headlights. Whatever it was, was gone. I don't care who or what it is, but we aren't sticking around to find out. Just then, as out of nowhere, this old pickup truck passed by from left to right. Thank God, I'll just follow that truck back to the main road. We shifted into gear and peeled out, the truck being 100 or so feet in front of us. The road came to a sharp bend and the taillights of the truck disappeared beyond view. We came up to where the truck had passed and it was a straightaway pass there. There was nothing on the road. No truck. No taillights. No one. We were pretty silent for the rest of the ride home. When we got back, we all just kind of sat around in the studio and thought. We unpacked the car and it took us a while to get all our things out. Fuck me, I said under my breath as to not let the others hear me. On the roof and the back window of the car were a few pairs of handprints. Maybe Robert or myself touched the condensation on the car or something, but I, I just don't know. After that night, we never really did go ghost hunting again. Needless to say, we also didn't sleep much that night. The story of our little adventure was brought up to our friends and we laughed at them at the thought of us seeing some crazy demonic whatever the fuck kind of shit was back there. You may call bullshit, call me a liar and think I'm some loony from New Jersey who just loves his horror movies and paranormal shows a little too much, but I know what I saw. We all know what we saw that chilly September night in Muttontown Woods.